If you dig through your nearest toy box, you'll find some pretty familiar forms of ancient life. You got your Triceratops, you got your Tyrannosaurus, and one of my personal favorites, the Pachycephalosaurus. But you know the one animal in here that doesn't quite belong? The one that's doing its own thing? The Stegosaurus. If you take it as a given that extinct dinosaurs were all weird and wonderful, then you gotta at least consider that Stegosaurus is one of the weirdest and wonderfulest. Stegosaurus is the most recognizable genus of the Stegosaurids, four-legged herbivores that sported bony plates and spiky spines in their backs, earning them the name that means roofed lizard. But unlike the other dinosaurs you find in your toy box, which lived in the Cretaceous period, Stegosaurids hit their prime a lot earlier in the Jurassic. This is when some of the biggest herbivores like Diplodocus roamed the Earth, while carnivores like Allosaurus had just come on the scene. It was in this environment that Stegosaurus thrived, with the help of some awesome adaptations. But in some ways, despite all that armor, it might have been a little under-equipped, because its brain was almost impossibly small. Stegosaurus had one of the lowest brain-to-body ratios of any known dinosaur. The animal itself can grow up to 9 meters long, about the size of a small bus. But its brain was only about 60 square centimeters, the size of a puppy's. And when I say that this was almost impossibly small, what I mean is for a century or so, some paleontologists actually thought that Stegosaurus must have had a second brain in its butt. In the 1880s, Yale paleontologist O.C. Marsh found that some specimens of Stegosaurus had a big cavity in its sacrum, where the spinal column meets the pelvis. And he figured, since the brain and the head probably wasn't doing very much, maybe Stegosaurus is getting some help from its, for lack of a better word, butt brain. This led to a pernicious myth that Stegosaurus had, if not an actual second brain, then at least a separate bundle of nervous tissue that helped control its tail and legs. We know now, of course, that Stegosaurus did not have two brains, and some experts think the cavity in its sacrum was actually used to store glycogen, the starchy compound that animals, including you and me, use to store energy. And just because his brain was small, that doesn't mean Stegosaurus was stupid. In fact, he didn't want to tangle with this thing because it had a secret weapon, the Thagomizer. That's the unofficial name for the dinosaur's spiky tail. Not all Stegosaurids had Thagomizers, but for those that did, like Stegosaurus and Kentrosaurus, fossil evidence shows that they were very effective weapons. In 2014, the study of an Allosaurus fossil from Wyoming showed that its pubic bone had a puncture wound that matched the spikes on a Stegosaurus tail. Researchers concluded that the Allosaurus had attacked a Stegosaurus, which landed a blow right in the predator's groin. The wound became so badly infected that it killed the Allosaurus, and the fossil record preserved was probably the most gruesome groin shot ever documented. Now, I'm sure you're wondering about the Thagomizer's name. Well, in 1982, Gary Larson's comic strip, The Far Side, depicted a group of cavemen getting a lesson in dinosaur anatomy. And it shows the weaponized tail of the Stegosaurus labeled as a Thagomizer, quote, after the late Thag Simmons. Okay, I know what you're gonna say. Cavemen and dinosaurs did not live at the same time. But the point is, the name stuck. By the 1990s, paleontologists actually started referring to this tail feature as a Thagomizer. And when I interviewed Dr. Robert Baker, the researcher who studied the Wyoming Allosaurus, he assured me that the Thagomizer is an accepted term for a Stegosaurid spiky tail. Now, by far the most recognizable parts of a Stegosaurid are the bony plates along its back, often called scutes. Not scutes, by the way, I looked it up. Scute and if you want to start a real brawl among a bunch of paleontologists, just ask them what those scutes were for. Because they are still some of the most hotly debated features in dinosaur physiology. For a long time, it was argued that the scutes were there for thermoregulation. In the 1970s, researchers found some tubes running through some fossilized scutes and thought maybe they circulated blood through the plates to radiate heat. But not everyone agrees with this. Some experts have pointed out that not all stegosaurids had a lot of scutes, so if they did give them some advantage, they'd be more common. Others have noted that the tubes don't actually run all the way through the plates, which they would do if their job was to circulate blood. Now, you might also think that the scutes were defensive, but if that were the case, some experts have asked why they only appear on the back and not on the sides or on the skull. The most recent theory is that stegosaurs had scutes because they just looked awesome. After all, modern day birds have made a very good living by having a lot of features that are just for display. So why couldn't the same be true for extinct dinosaurs? In 2005, a paper from Berkeley suggested that the plates helped the dinosaurs tell one species from another. 10 years later, another study from Princeton proposed that the plates were even sex specific, with females having tall skinny plates while males sported bigger broader ones. But again, not everyone agrees. What I think everyone can agree on is that stegosaurids are famous for good reason. They might not have had the biggest brains, but they cut a distinctive figure for themselves back in the Jurassic with their skew and their thagomizers, which they knew how to use. What do you want to know about the history of life on Earth? Let us know in the comments, and don't forget to go to youtube.com eons and subscribe. Now, do yourself a favor and check out some of our sister channels from PBS Digital Studios. Your brain will thank you.